pressure profiling and espresso extraction. It's modifying the pressure during an extraction to change the flow rate of brew water through the coffee. An advanced brewing feature found in commercial grade machines from companies like La Marzocco, Senesso, and Slayer Espresso. For home espresso enthusiasts, pressure profiling is next level control. In the right hands, it has the potential to tease out the best flavors a particular coffee has to offer. Hey, espresso heads, Mark from Whole Latte Love here. Today, I've got an in-depth look and feature review of Rocket Espresso's R91. Coming up, all the details, including specs. I'll cover my history with this machine. We'll pop the hood, my favorite part, and go inside the machine for a look at components and how they operate. Have results of performance testing, including steaming. I'll pull shots using different pressure profiles. I'll get into why you might choose the R91 over other machines with similar capabilities and have a quick look at a plumbable water filtration system. Really a must for any machine at this level that prevents scale while providing the mineral level required for best flavor. It was a little less than a year ago prior to it going into production that I first saw the R91 at the Specialty Coffee Expo in Seattle. Andrew Mio, owner, founder of Rocket Espresso, took me through the machine and its capabilities. About three months after that, our team visited Rocket's domestic and commercial production facilities in Milan, Italy. There we got some more details and tested it out for a day. Now, even though Rocket considers this a domestic machine, albeit a premium one, it is produced in their commercial facility, and that makes sense. Here's our Todd checking out the brew boiler and saturated group of the R91 while we were there. Like other parts on the machine, it's a component derived from their commercial products. Wow. Moving on, in December, Andrew and Rocket Technician Mateo came to our service facility in the U.S. to train our tech department staff on the R91. I've been working with this machine for about three months now. Before I get into detailed technical specs, let's consider what makes this machine stand out. First, there's really no other machine with a saturated group at this price. Then throw in the pressure profiling and some other features I'll get to in a minute, and you've just got to have a look. Now, if you know your machines, you're probably saying something like, hey, Mark, what about the La Marzocco GS3 MP? Well, it's a fine machine, no doubt about it, but the R91 costs less than a GS3. And one big important difference between the machines, repeatability. Now, on either machine, you can use the paddle and do manual profiles all day long, but when you hit one that gets the best out of a particular coffee or grind, on the R91, you can save what you did manually and have the machine repeat it for you. Now, I guess on the GS3, you can try and do that, you know, carefully adjust the paddle to hit the same pressures at just the same time, like you did for that perfect shot you had just done. Maybe you get close. Will you be able to repeat that tomorrow or the next day or next week? Possibly, but it's going to be uh, kind of tough. On the R91, you can run a manual profile, save it, and repeat it. That repeatability is huge. In fact, if you want that function in a La Marzocco machine, you've got to move up from the GS3 to a Strata EP, and that one's going to set you back about 15 grand. And one more nugget to consider, the R91 controls pressure by pump speed and not through a valve like the GS3. That pump control is similar to the setup in La Marzocco's higher-end Strata. Beyond the recordable manual mode, you've got five individually programmable pressure profiles. In those, you can set pressure and time values in five steps, and you can do that right on the machine. No need to USB connect and use a web app for programming. So the basics, the saturated group is connected to a 1.9 liter boiler. The steam boiler is 3.7 liters with a top pressure around 1.6 bar. Both boilers have 1600 watt elements under PID control, are stainless steel and larger than the boilers in a GS3. It's plumbable or reservoir fed and includes lines for water input and the drip tray output. The pump is an ultra reliable brushless magnetic design. There's a real time profile graphing and flow meter display during an extraction. Hot water mixing is available when the machine is plumbed and temperature adjustable so you're not gonna scorch those Americanos. The commercial steam wand is lever operated, insulated and comes with a two hole tip. The Jakar touchscreen display controls the machine and you can set 
two on-off cycles for each day of the week. The machine comes with single, double, and bottomless porta filters, single and double IMS competition filter baskets, and a triple basket for the bottomless porta filter. So let's take a look at how the R91 operates. To do that, I'm going to pull two shots. First one is going to be completely manual, and then I'll save it. After that, I'll pull a shot using a pressure profile, which I programmed. Now, speaking of programming, at the end of this video, I've tacked on a five-minute deep dive into operations of the Jacquard touchscreen, covering every available function in detail. So if you want to learn more, hang around and do check that out. For now, I really want to get in and show you the machine in action, so let's get to that. All right, so let's do a manual shot. I've got 21 grams in the triple shot uh, basket and portafilter that came with the machine uh, on our screen here, which I brought in so you can get a good look at it. Uh, I'm on profile D right now, so I'm gonna go, there's profile E, there's our save profile. Here's where we can run manual via the paddle and then save it at the end. Got an Akaya scale here with that 21 grams. I'm looking for a one to two ratio and 42 grams out. So we'll start this and uh, it's continuously variable here, the electronic paddle. So I'm gonna bring up, do a little low pre-infusion, about three bar, you can see got the flow meter, the graph going, starting to get some drip here and timing here. I'm going to bring that pressure up. You can watch the graph change there. I'm kind of keeping an eye on my shot. I like that. I'm going to let that run. You can see how the graph changes now. Getting up on my 25 grams. I'm going to start bringing that pressure down just a little bit. I'm at 36, 37, 40. I'm going to cut the shot there. And you can see now I like that. So I'm going to just press this button. And last profile saved. So now that's profile that I just ran has been saved and I can repeat that exactly. Okay, so we just did that manually profile we saved. I'm gonna repeat that now. So I've reloaded the porta filter again with 21 grams. Gonna see what our output is here. Uh, so I'll cycle through A, B, C, D, E, and here's our save profile. Now the paddle just becomes a simple on off switch. So to start the extraction, just pull it over. And again, I'm gonna get, you can watch what's happening here on the graph. Our pressure, right now we're at three six, getting that little drip. And I, somewhere, somewhere in here, I started to bring it back up, okay. And we're bringing the pressure back up. You see our flow meter here. Now this isn't what ends up in your cup because this is flow before the group. So any coffee that's in the water, that kind of thing. And a little bit of, little bit of spurting here. I'm up to 33, 34, 37, 39. I'm cut it there at 42. And there's our extraction. Looks, looks pretty similar. Now I had you know, a couple little separations there at the end, but really looks very similar to our last one. So repeated exactly what I did. Um, now let's go ahead and we'll run a saved extraction. All right, so now we're gonna run a profile that I've set up. Again, I got the screen in here. It's gonna be profile A. Now let me show you what that is. So I'm gonna go to the next screen over into my profiles, and here is that profile. We got times on the, on the left there, five of them, pressures on the right. So we're gonna do six seconds at two and a half bar, 18 seconds at eight bar, three seconds at six bars, uh, then uh, I'm gonna finish it off. I've just put in a high number here, 11 seconds at two and a half bar to finish it off. Um, so that's what it's gonna be. I'm gonna go back to my main screen here and I'm on profile A. So I'm all ready to go. Again, 21 grams again in here. Have no idea what's gonna happen because typically it might adjust your grind a little bit depending on the profile you're running. Um, paddle now is just an on off switch. So push it over and it's gonna start running that profile. You can kind of see the graph of it here. You know, we got the flow meter, the timing, how many bars we're at and the graph of the pressure. Starting to get some drift there as we went up to eight. I got the Akaya scale going here just to see what happens with this one. And right now I'm at about 10 grams. And I can stop this at any time just by moving the paddle back over again, just an on off switch. I'm at 23. Now we're slowing down, we're down to two and a half bar and it's just gonna finish out there. About 35 grams. So, you know, I probably need to work with this profile a little bit. I don't know, I'd wanna taste it too. And I'm gonna just let it run out to the 42 grams and we're right about there. So just turn it off. I got my 42 grams. You see, I had everything in the display there that was happening. So that's really powerful stuff. The ability to run a totally manual extraction, watch the effects of your pressure changes on flow, 
then when you nail one, you can save it and repeat it, be it today, tomorrow, next week, or in a month. That repeatability, very powerful. And then you've got those five pressure profiles, which you can edit any way you like. So if you want a really long, low pressure pre-infuser, maybe then up to nine bar and tail off the pressure to finish, or maybe a three bar, six bar, three bar profile. You know, whatever you want, it's on the machine, ready to go, and you can experiment with different profiles to find out how they affect flavors of a particular coffee. All right, so one of my favorite parts of these videos definitely is taking the cover off and having a look at what's inside, so let's do that. Okay, so really pretty easy getting the R91 opened up. A couple screws up top, take those out. One screw inside of the uh, reservoir carrier there, take that out, then the whole uh, assembly, including that reservoir carrier, come right out. Next, I'm going to take off the uh, lever here so we can get that side panel off. Pretty easy. You want to just pop the, uh, the little cover, the R cover off inside. Then there's one screw in there. After that, each of the panels has two screws up top, two down below. Um, you usually don't have to take those totally out. Just loosen them up and then you can take the panels out. frame of the machine here is all stainless. It's like a box construction. That box sits on these rails, which run front to back on both sides. We got the adjustable feet here. Um, so if you got a little unlevel, you can turn those a little bit. And up front here, I've got the drip tray off, but this is a collection area where you detach uh, your drain hose back here. Then up underneath, um, we'll see this when we move around top, there's uh, four exits here um, from different things that might produce water within the machine that gets collected, goes into the drip tray, and that drip tray is pre-drilled. You just take a nut out and then it'll drain into here. From this side of the machine, so we've got our brushless magnetic pump here. That's a 24 volt, volt DC pump. Uh, go back a little bit further, um, and depending on whether you're coming from the reservoir, there's a couple solenoid valves or from the plumbed in connection that control that, then a stainless braided line that goes into the pump itself. Uh, we've got our two boilers here, that really big steam boiler, uh, the brew boiler here with a group up top, um, an OPV valve here on the brew circuit, um, and then the actual filling of the steam boiler comes, it come, the uh, copper pipe down around here comes underneath and fills the boiler. Looking at the back of the machine here, here's that fill line, and something I really like to see, we've got a drain valve here, so you can drain this boiler. Um, no, no tube on that, so you'd want to connect something, but you can open the valve by turning this right here to drain out that boiler. Yeah, not the easiest thing to see here, but uh, looking at the bottom of the brew boiler, and if you can see where my finger is right there, there's a valve there that you can open, you can drain that boiler as well. Uh, nice touch. Some stuff to point out up top here. First, uh, a couple valves. This valve here, this is accessible with the machine cover on. What this is, is this bleeds air out of the group, so this copper pipe runs up to the group. You can open this up to bleed air, and any air or moisture that comes with that would come out of this silicone tube. Um, right here, got the three-way solenoid valve on the group, so it's gonna let out the excess pressure when you stop an extraction. Our flow meter is right here, so you can do, you can program a volume for a shot, um, and the flow meter will measure that. Again, that's prior to the group, so, uh, any water held in your coffee cake, that kind of thing. I um, mean, you need to account for that, but you can program that. Um, over here, another valve right here, this is the hot water mixing valve. So when the machine is plumbed in, you can turn this to allow some cold water in as well. So, you know, you're not gonna, like I said earlier, burn those Americanos. So you can turn this down, um, you get, you know, whatever you want, much, much below the boiling water that's in the boiler here. Um, up here, this is the pressure transducer, an electrical one. There is an analog one. So this measures pressure here um, from this point. Then over here, this is the back end of that Jakar touchscreen display. There is a USB cable here. That's any firmware updates down the road, any updates to the machine, um, you could do through this USB cable. Uh, what else we got? Um, so all the silicone tubing here, that's to route any moisture, again, down into the drip tray where I showed you before. Um, so all low pressure stuff, any water that's going in the brew circuit um, after the pump is gonna be in copper tubing. Um, we got a couple different solenoid valves here, one on the water. Um, we'll take a closer look. Uh, the the uh, valve for steam is 
right here, that's on a cam. Um, so when you turn the steam valve, you get some cam action there to open that up. There's a better look at the, the cam that operates the steam valve here. On the left side of the machine here, uh, we got the 24 volt uh, Jakar box, two static relays. These are what fire up the uh, heating elements in the boiler. So there's two of them, one for each boiler. It takes low voltage and closes the circuit to send high voltage uh, six to those 1600 watt elements in the boiler. Both boilers are gonna have a high limit reset. So if things get too hot, this will pop, and then you'd go in and you'd reset right here uh, in the unlikely event you needed to do that. Uh, up here, a solenoid valve. This out of the top of the boiler here, if the tube comes up, uh, this is for your hot water dispensing. It's controlled by that. Uh, you can see if you look real hard, there's, there's a heating element into the brew boiler. So if you wanted to take that out, if you ever needed to do that, you do have to remove a little bit of piping up here to get at that. So we'll take one last look from, from this side again, steam boiler, brew boiler. Um, up on top here, we've got an expansion valve. This is kind of a safety on the steam boiler. So any excess pressure or uh, water that would be routed through this silicone tube down into your drip tray. Um, again, the three-way solenoid valve um, coming from the uh, group. Um, our flow meter. Uh, this is for our uh, solenoid for our hot and cold water mixing right here. Again, adjustable, and that's adjustable with the cover on. Um, and again, there's that, there's that bleeder to bleed air out of the group. And again, through a silicone tube down the drip tray for any moisture. And that's it. So again, stainless steel box on those nice big rails down on the bottom. Really nice, heavy duty construction. Um, and again, borrowing a lot of uh, their commercial components. Starting steam pressure with the R91 all warmed up and idle is a little over 1.6 bar. Evaluating steaming performance out of the stock two hole tip, it took about 14 seconds to take six ounces of milk from 45 degrees to our preferred finish temperature of 140 degrees. And you get a nice vigorous roll of that. After 14 seconds of steam output, pressure drops to about 1.4 bar. And after that, you're ready to steam right away. Recovery time back to 1.6 bar or better was about 10 seconds. Next, I open the steam valve for 60 seconds and let it rip to test what kind of reserve the boiler has. Steam pressure there dropped to about 1.1 bar after 60 seconds of full steam output. Recovery time back to 1.6 bar was about 45 seconds. Next up, I tested out some rocket accessory steam tips. Now, these do not come with a machine, but can customize your frothing experience. Here they are in action, and it turns out they can really make a big difference. Remember, the stock two-hole tip got milk to 140 in about 14 seconds. The three and four-hole accessory tips all got the job done in under 12 seconds. The two-hole tip in the upper left there has smaller diameter holes than the stock two-hole tip and took about 23 seconds to hit 140. Now, that's double the time of the others, but maybe, you know, more time to work with your milk. One of the most important things you can do to keep your machine running well is to feed it with quality filtered water. Not only does it improve espresso flavor, but it can eliminate descaling maintenance. For a plumbed machine, our recommended solution is a BWT filter package with pressure regulator and an optional flow meter, which lets you know when it's time to change the filter cartridge. Beyond standard particle and activated carbon filtration, the BWT Best Max Premium Filter uses patented ion exchange technology, which removes scale causing calcium and replaces it with magnesium. This process maintains the mineral level required for best flavor while preventing scale buildup by reducing calcium. Scale buildup is the number one cause of machine problems down the road. So very important to feed your machine with good water. For peace of mind, a filtration system is required equipment on any plumbed in espresso machine. Before I wrap things up, a reminder to hang around for an extended look at the features and programming of the Jakar touchscreen. You'll find it's quite intuitive, simple to operate, and presents a wealth of information. Before that, some of my final thoughts on the R91. If pressure profiling is where you want to go, Rocket Espresso's R91 is worthy of your consideration. Why? Well, the only other saturated group machine close in features and price is the GS3, and it lacks that profile repeatability. 
You can't run a manual profile on a GS3, save it, and repeat it. This machine has larger boilers, similar hot water mixing capabilities, and I like the reliability of controlling brew pressure via the pump rather than using a restricting valve. And you can also program shots based on volume with the R91. There'll be more about that in a second with that extended coverage of the touchscreen operation. Now, if you have any comments or questions, go ahead, fire away down in the comments section, and I'd be happy to get you detailed answers. I'm Mark, thanks for watching, and if you're hanging around, here's that extended look at the touchscreen. All right, so let's go through the touchscreen and menu system of the R91 here. Three main screens indicated by the dot here. So we're on the first screen here, second screen, third screen. Go back to the first screen, go through this. Got our brew boiler temperature up here, 199.9 Fahrenheit. Uh, up this little icon here indicates whether our boiler is heating or not. If it's blue, it's not. If it's red, it is. Um, over here, we have the time and 24 hour time. So 1418 or 218 at the moment. And these, the single and double bars here, this is for volumetric based extractions uh, for a single or a double. These are programmable. More on that in a minute. There's a flow meter up here so the machine can stop automatically when you hit a certain volume. Uh, for hot water, uh, just press right here. I've got this program for delivering four ounces of hot water. It's going to stop automatically when that happens. Now, if I wanted to get a little more, I can touch this at any time and touch again to start and stop it. It'll still do that four ounces. You can program that to whatever you like. And of course, the real business of this machine is the flavor profiles. You've got five programmables and one manual profile that you can save. So we've got A, B, C, D, E. Here's where our saved manual profile is. If we want to run a manual profile and save it, we go to here where you get the little red hand and it says save to star. So I'm going to do that right now. So I'm just going to turn the paddle here and we'll start out slow. Of course, we're going to get way too much water here. And we'll go up more, 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 increasing the pressure. And you can see the little graph here is tracking my moves. And I like that. We'll bring it back down. We'll finish with a low pressure end here. And now, so we got the whole graph now. I like that, so I can save it. So I do that, press the little, and last profile saved. Now, if I want to run that profile again, automatically, it's real easy. Let's go back to that star, so cycle through our others here. Back at the star. Now, the paddle is just now on off. So I just take it all the way over or to when it starts, and it'll run that same profile for me. Exactly what I did, again, real low and slow. Then we came up. And it's doing exactly what I said, and it shows that graph again. Looks like my cup might overflow here a bit. <laughs> again, no coffee in here, so we're running a lot more water than we normally would. And there you go. So that was our manually saved profile. I'm going to take this back to profile A here. So we'll go to our second screen. Here we've got the alert icon here. So if there's any alerts, any problems with the machines, you'll get an alert right here. I don't have any at the moment. Um, over here, we can turn the steam boiler off and on just by pressing there. Once you get the X through it, our steam boiler is turned off. I'm going to make a latte later, so I'm going to leave that on. Under the wrench here, we can choose from our water source. Right now, I'm operating from the uh, tank in the machine, but you can. This is a pummel machine, so you can choose that. I'm going to leave that on tank. You can also choose uh, the language that you want to use here. I'm going to leave that in English for now and the temperature. So for the rest of the world, you guys switch that to Celsius. I'm here in the US, so we're going to leave that on Fahrenheit so everybody knows what I'm talking about. So we like all that. Uh, let's see, over here, here's where we set our boiler temperatures. So right now, my coffee boiler is set at 199.9 Fahrenheit. If I want to set my steam temperature right here, uh, 266 is the max in Fahrenheit and that. I think it's your, really close to 1.7 bar pressure. If you want to change that, just use the arrows here. And you can go like two tenths of a degree at a time, or if I just press and hold that, it'll start moving rapidly like that. So you can make those bigger moves without having to press, 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 press. But I want mine at 266, so I'm going to press and hold on the other side here and take that right back up to 266. And I like that. We'll dump out of there. Um, over here, really nice feature. 
Um, I mean, pretty straightforward. Here's where we set our date and time. But you can also set, for each day of the week, you can set um, automatic off and on time. So there's a global setting. So if you leave town, you can turn this off. I can turn that on just so we can see what it does. So in a, right now I have Monday enabled. Um, we have time one, the start time for Monday, the stop time for Monday on time one, and then you have a second one, start and end time. So you can have two times per day, and you can do that for every day of the week, and you can enable and disable days of the week individually. Um, so out of there. Um, and then, so the last one here, of course, the pressure profile. And this is where we can go in and edit profiles individually. So we've got profile A, B, C, D, E. Go back to A, tell you what's going on here. So you've got your times and then the pressure that that amount of time is going to run at. So we've got 15 seconds at 2 bar, 5 seconds at 5 bar, 21 seconds at 9 bar, uh, 10 seconds at 4 bar, and 10 seconds at 2.5 bar. Extraction would likely be over unless our grind was really tight by then. Uh, but you can go in and edit these if you want. So we'll take a look at what we have for B here. We'll show you how they edit. So right here, we've got five seconds, five seconds, five seconds, five seconds, and 15 seconds at three, four, five, six, and nine bar. Um, and when you're running these, it's just a simple um, off on of, of the paddle here. So you just, when you're running a profile, you just pop it over and it runs a profile for you. So if I wanted to adjust these, let's say, yeah, you know, I want six seconds for on the first time here. So I just go up and I can go up in 10th of a second increments. You can do that fast. You can hold and make it faster, but I like that. Uh, say OK. Now that will be saved. Um, so let's go to the third screen here. Um, so if we go, this is where we do our programming of volume. So we can program our water amount um, and our volumetric uh, amounts for either a single or a double. And I'm going to dump this out. Let's show you how that works. I'll just put it in there. Um, so if, let's say I want to, so if I want to program the single shot, just press. And it's going to run whatever profile I have and have active at the moment with that. But let's say I want it to get to, I don't know, right about there. So I want 38 milliliters for that. So now that amount will be programmed. Um, if I go back here now and hit the single volumetric, again, it's going to run whatever profile I have selected, but run uh, a, a measured volume of water through it. Um, so it does just what I told it to do. Um, so. That's the uh, touchscreen functioning of the Rocket R91. Well, there you go. As you can see, the touchscreen really is very reactive when you hit it in the right spot. You know, you're not standing off to the side trying to operate it. Now, we've been using, I think I've done, you know, maybe 250 uh, extractions on the machine. I don't know, we're up around 390-ish there in the total since we've had the machine a couple weeks. A lot of other people here have been using the machine and really liking this. Um, that that the menu system on the machine, you know, it's a little different, but you know, after using it for about 20 minutes, I was very comfortable getting around in there. All made a lot of sense. Again, if you have any questions now on the Rocket R91, pressure profiling, uh, saturated group machine from Rocket, use those comments, let me know, or be happy to talk to you about anything coffee there. I'm Mark from Whole Latte Love. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you back here soon for more of the best on everything coffee. Want to learn more? Subscribe now so you'll know about the latest videos on everything coffee from Whole Latte Love. Oh.